the whole problem of my childhood or even going through the hostel, going through high school, uh, the problem was I had an identity crisis. I didn't really know who I was and having to be happy in who I am and having to like happy the things I like. If I don't like something, I don't like it. And I had a huge identity crisis. And once that was the problem, I think a lot of things came into play that if someone gives me a name, I'll take it to heart. Someone calls me something. I think the problem came with an identity crisis. Growing up, my, I suffered from low self-esteem because my brothers were bigger, better, and faster, everything better than me. So with that, it dealt a blow to my ego, who I am, and it forced me to become a self-pleaser. I used to please people. I just did things just because I want to be considered as a good boy. And with that, it resulted into watching pornography. At least I could find satisfaction in that because I'm not getting satisfaction from my older brothers and indulging, having to become a bully because at least I can look down on someone. At least no one is looking down on me. It was so bad that I went into alcohol as well. A short period of time I got addicted to alcohol because not necessarily because I wanted it, just because my buddy next door is going to go drink a beer and I just felt like I don't want to be known as that guy who's not cool, who's not fun, who's not fun, fun to be hang around with and, uh, and I just did what they did because I don't want to be known as someone who's not fun, who's not cool and with that I got addicted to pornography, I got addicted to drinking alcohol especially on a Saturday watching soccer games and I just, could, I just lost a purpose for living. I just lost who I was, who I am, who am I supposed to be. I didn't know because I just found that from other people. That was very, very, very bad. And, and I remember my mom, my parents talking to me about it, but it was too late because I was already into the path and, and they couldn't even do anything because I believed I was doing right. I believed what I was doing was right and I didn't find anything wrong with it. And that was the problem with it as well. The year 20, 2011, at the end, we had a, at the farm, we went to the farm. We had a, we had a big party at my father's farm and I got so drunk. I got so, so drunk one time and you know, my dad, for the first time being alive, my first time, my dad saw me drunk and he was so disappointed in me. He said some words to me and, and I, the next morning I woke, I prayed to God and said, God, please change me. Uh, I don't want to be this guy that disappoints my father. I don't want to be someone who does bad things to people that disappoint people that, that, that matters to me. And it was in 2012, the year 2012, I even prayed again and I said, God, please send me someone. I want to be able to, to know you. I can't, I don't know anyone. Everyone around me don't know anything about you. And it was only in June, the 2nd of June 2012, that it was on a Saturday night. Uh, that weekend, I went to my mom, to my mother's house to, for a weekend just to go visit her. And, and it was so amazing that, that I went, went there with my friends there, we were passing this bar, and I saw a group of people there, I don't know what they were doing, and I re later realized it's a church. And I saw someone coming to me, and I'm seeing him, and he's coming to me, and I wanted to dodge him, because I know where it's going. But somehow he caught me and he spoke to me and he just spoke to me. He made it so simple, you know, he, he brought, he just, what he said to me, it was very simple for me to understand. But it was so amazing, he asked me a question and he just said, uh, don't you want to pray now? And I said, I, listen man, look at the place where we are. Can you not give me a paper? I'll come to your church tomorrow, uh, you know, but he said, what if tomorrow never happens, you know, what if tomorrow never comes? But I was like, who are you to say that, you know, you are not God, and, and, and then it was just there. So that Saturday night, 
when he spoke to me about Jesus, I actually did pray to receive Jesus Christ and because he made it so simple for me not to pray. He just explained everything to me and I knew what the next step was and nothing magical happened, you know, I didn't feel butterflies in my stomach, uh, ground did not move beneath me but all I knew was Jesus forgave me of my sins. I could, I just knew I, I got a second chance to life and, and I couldn't just throw that away. I couldn't just give, just throw away that second chance that I got. And he invited me over for a Sunday service uh, the next day, but I didn't have any church clothes. So I, I felt maybe, you know, they're gonna judge me. I, they're gonna say things I don't have. But he just said, no, just come. And I, and I actually, that Sunday morning, I didn't go to church because I didn't have church clothes. But he invited me for the Sunday evening, which started at 6 o'clock, 6.30. And I went, and then it was, something happened. I sat in that service, and I, and I actually literally wept at the altars. Because I couldn't understand why, why a God would give someone like me a second chance. I couldn't understand why a God that is perfect, that is holy, that is big, could forgive someone like me. All for my life, all my 19 years, I lived like this. No God, I lived like, I don't care, I don't love him, but why would he give me a second chance? And it was so amazing that day I wept there and I started thinking about my brothers, I started thinking about my parents, my mom, where would they go if they died? And, and then just knowing where they would go, I felt better about it because I like I have to let someone know about this because there's a hope, there's a, there's a second chance to life. And it's so amazing that no one, I didn't have any preacher to preach to me. I just knew that pornography was wrong. I just, it's like, it's like chains fell off. Chains fell off, I couldn't go back to pornography anymore. And, and I just knew that I can't go back to dirt anymore because it was making my mind dirty. Every time I watch pornography, my mind gets, I get, it's like I get, I feel guilty about it after doing it. And I just, so it's like, I felt God saying, why go back to the things that condemn you again? And that's the purpose to living. And then I'm, in six years now, uh, serving God, I'm still shocked myself. It's a miracle I'm still, for someone who never went to church, who never worried about God. And on one night, one night, Saturday night, in front of a bar, someone came to me and told me about Jesus. That person had no clue. I have no clue. I'm still shocked. Uh, that I'm still serving God. It's a miracle of God. My identity is found in Jesus Christ. I am who I am because Jesus says so. Jesus gave me peace and, and I, I don't have to please people. That doesn't mean you should be rude to people, or you should be obnoxious, and then, but I just found my identity in Jesus that I am who I am because Jesus says so. I am Neville Dero and I'm forgiven. I'm forgiven that I can walk every day, I can wake up every morning knowing that His mercies are new and, and I just love that. That's what I love about it. There's how many people are out there, they don't know that they can be forgiven just if, if they come as they are. Come as you are and, and the, the main important thing is the Word of God. We are from the Potter's House, Christian Fellowship Church. If you don't have a place where you worship, you are invited for every Sunday mornings. We have two services every Sunday. Sunday, 10 o'clock in the morning, and Sunday, 6.30. Those are not repeats, every new service. And we have every Wednesday, 6.30 as well, and you are invited.